So today I want to go over the sheet engine tutorial. Um, basically it just goes over a lot of real good basic usage of sheet engine. So we'll go ahead and start with that. Um, to open the tutorial just go to the help menu and click. You can actually even be going along with the um, 32 or 64 bit but I'm going to be doing the 32 bit for starters here. So basically the first step really isn't too complicated. Uh, it's more or less just attached to the process. So you just want to click that process button. Um, go ahead and select the tutorial. You can double click it or click it and hit open. doesn't really matter. Um, so then we just go ahead and hit the next step. And this one's pretty straightforward. The main thing we got to do is just find a health value and freeze it to a thousand not real complicated um, and I think it even tells you down here that it is in fact an integer but normally if you don't know you would just kind of guess with different types until you could find something that actually affect you know has the effect you're looking for or shows some kind of effect depending upon exactly what you're trying to hack whether it's something you know uh, no recoil or a simple health freeze but so we start off with our first scan, we get a lot of values, we want to go and hit this hit me button, just basically do something to get the value to decrease or change really. Uh, we see it's showing, actually shows us the actual value so that makes searching for it a lot easier. Um, you can double click it to add it to the list here, basically we just want to change it to a thousand and then freeze it and then that'll, that should ungrade the next button so on to step three here we can see that it's telling us that we're going to be wanting to look for a, a four byte value um, we don't know what the value is so let's click new scan and then just unknown initial value do our first scan that's going to find out a lot of stuff more or less um, well there it actually is showing us how much it's decreasing by but one of the, you can still just on this, something this simple, we can just start off with this simple decrease value. I'm going to keep hitting it a few more times and get this work down. I even want to do an unchanged value, filter out some of that kind of stuff. Now, since it actually told us it's a simple integer, these could be negative values. These could be anything, really, at this point. Um, we'll go ahead and decrease it a little more and see if it's actually decreasing at the same rate that it's showing, and it does seem to be doing that. So, this looks like this is going to be our value. And all we need to do is change it to 5,000, and I'm guessing freeze it. We may not even need to freeze it. So on to step four, we've got two values we need to find. Um, and it's telling us right off the bat, which makes it simple, that uh, one is a float and the other is a double. So we'll start off looking for our float. We can actually see our value is 100. Um, we found one right off the bat, so that looks like that's our value. So then let's go ahead and find that double now. And it looks like that's going to be our value as well. And then all we got to do is change these both to 5,000. And freeze them both. Um, you can always just hit the space bar when you've got an address selected to check the box more or less or activate it. Um, with addresses that just freezes it. So our next button has become available and we'll go ahead and go on to step five okay so now with step five um, this one's not too complicated the main thing with this one is we're going to be trying to freeze it inside the code because more or less what's happening is the function reads it modifies it 
and then uses that modified value from the registry more than it actually reads back the address. So simply freezing it and forcing a value into the address won't work. So we need to actually stop the code from changing the value more or less. Um, so let's go ahead and start by finding it. We'll look where a simple integer first. Oh, I need to reattach. If you're relaunching at some point, you'll have to do that. Um, so first scan. Let's see. If, yeah, it looks like it's right there. Okay. So now what we want to do, we can even demonstrate this. So if we freeze that to 5,000, we can see that it doesn't actually work. It's still using this other value. Um, and that's what we need to do is actually stop the code from changing the value in the registry or in the address. Sometimes you'll actually have to follow a read and see what happens, see where it leads to. Um, so when we select, find out what accesses this address, it'll ask you to, if you want to attach the debugger, go ahead and say yes. And then now what we want to do is actually go ahead and hit that and we can see what's going on here is we're having a read and then a write so it's going to be more or less right in here um, we may not actually need to stop it from decreasing the registry because it may read it back right after that it kind of looks like that's what's going on um, Let's just go ahead and try a simple, uh, where is that, yeah, replace with code that does nothing. And this will actually store it in the, the code list or advanced options deal. Oh, yeah, code list. So now if we do that, go ahead and change it to 5,000 and then we can stop that change value and it freezes at a 5,000 and we can go to the next step. So to undo that change that we made we can just simply come back here and restore with original bytes in case you ever it's not the right thing or something of that nature. Um, we don't really need that injected anymore so we can take it out although with this it's set up where it's really not going to be an issue. So now on to step six. Um, this one's going to be demonstrating where you find, say, health, but then every time you fast travel or load a new map or start a new round or whatever the case may be, new level, it changes its placement. So you need to actually find the pointer itself. So let's start off with seeing what accesses this address when we change the value. So when we change the value, we see that comes up. Um, so what we want to look at, so we can kind of see there that we actually already found the base. Um, this was 64-bit. We'd have to do a little bit more to come up with this address. But for 32-bit, we can actually just, that's the base address for this. It's stored here. Um, we actually want to grab it that way. And just control copy on that line and add in here and just delete what we don't need. And then it's got an offset of zero. And this one, I believe, we can just freeze it at 5,000. And then change pointer. Yeah, that seemed to work. So now on to step seven, what we want to do is pretty much do another code injection like we did in step five, except instead of just no opening code, we actually need to change it so it adds two instead of decreasing by one. So we just want to start off with finding the value first, of course. So once we find the value, we can see what accesses it. And here we can see where it's subbing the value. Let's 
Let's go ahead and change that to add two. And then we should be able to hit next once we hit hit me. So now on to step eight. We're pretty much going to be doing a real similar thing that we did on step six, except it's going to be a multi-level pointer this time. Um, we're actually being told exactly how deep it is, which you'll never really get that. But for learning purposes, it can be helpful. So we want to start off with finding the value. It looks like we got it right there. Um, so again, there's a couple different ways that we could go about this. We could even just do a simple pointer scan. Yeah, see like the default settings on this would actually find it just fine. Usually I make a scans folder inside any cheat tables I'm working on. I would actually even like to make a secondary folder, so let's say this is health. And then we could just keep using this to keep refining it down. We'll go ahead and keep that there for a minute come back to it. Um, so another thing we can also do is see what accesses it. So change value. So we've only got one right here. So if we just kind of follow this up we could actually most likely find the address. Um, looks like we got our first offset of zero there maybe. But a lot of times what I like to do is go ahead and find the first, you know, the first bit of the instruction. Um, you can scroll up and manually find it, kind of looks like we already did there. Um, that or there should be a select current function. And that'll take you up to the top, whatever it cheat engine thinks is the top of it pretty much. And then we want to go ahead and do a break and trace. And then it should actually launch like that. You'll want to check a few of these boxes. Um, we could input conditions if we thought there was more stuff running through this function. In this case, that's not really necessary. Once we launch that, I want to go ahead and hit change value. And then about the easiest way is to refind your instruction. We see that here it's the same address and then we can just kind of watch ESI for changes. And, uh, and the way it works with Cheat Engine is whenever a registry is changed it turns red. But So when you first click on something it, it will kind of look a little weird but in this case we can see that ESI is not getting changed between those two points. Um, then just kind of follow it up until we see ESI turn red. So we got our first offset of zero. So we can go ahead and start keeping track of this information more or less. Um, you can actually read along with it just to double check stuff. So in this case, we could actually see, find out what addresses this instruction access, uh, and change value, and confirm that we're getting what we're looking for here. But that plus what, uh, what was that last option? Yeah, so that looks right. Um, But this one we know is kind of simple so we don't really need to waste a lot of time double checking ourselves all the way up as long as we can actually keep track of our offsets we should be okay because that's really all we need is a base and all the offsets 
and make sure we don't forget that last one let's go ahead and do that plus 18 up here and then just because cheat engine lists them out this way let's go ahead and actually put it the way it would in cheat engine more or less it would start at the bottom would be your, your final offset that we're going to find. Technically it's your first though from the base as it starts to read through the pointer. Um, so we keep scrolling up now. We already had one offset. Looks like our next one's going to be 1-4. Remember all this is in hacks. It's, It's actually machine code, so technically it's binary in the computer, but for, for easy display, it'll be always written back as hacks and pretty much anything, at least by default. Um, so our next offset is C. And then that looks like that's going to be our final offset there. Um, or our base address actually with a offset of zero. But we can see we're actually getting the module and then the offset. And that's a little better than just getting just the address. This will give us a little more of a guarantee of it working out in the long run. So let's go and add address. Make it a pointer. Delete all that other stuff. And then we had four offsets. Yeah, I'm gonna go and move it on another screen where I can see that, but um, more or less we wanna go ahead and go with that C we had down at the bottom. And then our 1-4, if we did actually read this from a registry and stop there, we'd have to add our offset to that as well, but this is already our offset more or less on the module. So we had C, 1-4, 0, and 1-A. And you'll start seeing the value change as that goes along. And I think that's right, yeah. Okay. So that's our pointer chain and our pointer. And just remember, I mean, each pointer is kind of a value type itself. So on 32-bit, it's going to be a 32-bit integer that just points to the next address within the object or whatever the case may be for the offsets. So now we've got our pointer on the address list. Let's go back to our pointer scan results and see if anything is still lining up. As you can see here, it's not actually reading to save uh, CPU, basically. It doesn't read anything unless you click on it. I think maybe a control all will do it, yeah. So that reads them all back, and it looks like basically every single one of these is working out, and it may work out upon relaunches and launches. But the way we can start testing things is so if it was a a change of the map or whatever change would cause it to reload the pointer we can go ahead and run through that and see what we've got um, and as we can see here our the pointer that we made is working fine but it doesn't look like a lot of these are working out but what we can do to get the final address this is about the easiest way I do is just like you're doing a pointer scan then copy the address so there we can throw in the address and that's always going to be the best way when using the pointer scan method it's going to be refine the address and scan for that actual address and not just a value but we could just scan based on the value um, and as you can see i already did do one where you scan a one point uh, and that's kind of why i just go with the folder methods and then this way you can just go rescan after rescan after rescan and just keep increasing your number and know where you were at with each one so it looks like we've only got one here and it's actually using the exact same offsets we found um, as you can see in this case it wasn't too complicated to find it either method this one didn't even take a lot of time but now you kind of see how to 
I mean, the pointer scanner is just guessing. It's just going to read every possible path that leads to that address and then store all that information. And then when you change pointer, you rescan to see if what's still pointing at that address. Um, with a lot of newer games, you'll actually get where it's it's more dynamic. So even sometimes the base pointer won't even work. You'll you'll run through different lists and you know have different offsets at different points and different different um, index in a list or whatever the case may be. Um, there you a lot of times I just end up stopping halfway in the middle uh, and then do code injection to hook for the base. I'll show that at some point here before too long. So now that we got our two pointers here, what we're going to want to do is uh, freeze these at 5,000. I don't think we'll have to do any kind of code injection or anything like that. And as we can kind of see, change value, it's not really doing anything there, but we'll see if it... So it changes the value weights, reads it back to make it a little more simple, but um, we'll move on to step nine. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here just so I don't go too far over 20 minutes. I uh, didn't mean to make it so long, but step nine will be on a separate video. Um, thanks for watching and have a good one.